وانت معانا دلوقتي ما تستناش اي يا دكتور Good morning. Uh, we are almost ready to start our uh, transmission from uh, Dubai. Dr. Khaled Abdel Al is with us over there. Dr. Uh, Khaled, are you hearing us? Yes, Dr. Masad. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Dr. Khaled. Um, uh, uh, we are uh, very happy and pleased to have you with us uh, here, although uh, you have uh, some restrictions to be physically with us. Unfortunately, and uh, we are hoping that we can um, have you on the next meeting. Uh, today, uh, as we uh, per our talk last time, uh, you will uh, present a case, uh, a difficult case of mesenteric ischemia. This uh, is supposed to be uh, over 15 minutes, and uh, then we will do a voting for uh, which kind of therapy uh, that uh, the audience are preferring. You can start, Dr. Khal, please. Thank you, Dr. Mossad. Good morning to everyone. I am very happy to participate in this meeting. Um, unfortunately, as Dr. Mossad said, I had a lot of restrictions. I cannot be uh, available physically, but I am with you with all my heart and my thoughts. And I wish you a very successful Congress. Um, so today, I shall present to you a case of mesenteric ischemia that we received last week. The idea is not um, a typical case. That's why I want to share with you. There is a lot of brainstorming and uh, critical conditions that need a collegial decision. And that's why I, I think it will be helpful to keep it in mind uh, such uh, wonderful cases. So it starts by 34 years old female. She is Filipino and presented to emergency room for severe abdominal pain. She has also nausea and vomiting, duration since two days, and she declared having soft stools, and last bowel motion was the night before. She presented also by tachypnea and shortness of breath. As a history of present illness, she is diabetic, and she, since two years, she has uncontrolled diabetes. While arriving to the emergency room, she was received by the internist who called the general surgeon and the general examination shows fever 39.9. She looks in pain, distressed, irritable, cannot sit in one position and severe abdominal examination shows severe distended abdomen and dull on percussion. Please keep in mind this distended abdomen because usually in case of mesenteric ischemia, we have a lot of pain, but this case is accompanied with a distended abdomen. There is tenderness on palpation, of course, measured on the epigastric area and both hypochondria. And both lower limbs show absent distal pulsation with coldness and sinus. Her vital signs are stable, blood pressure at 130 over 119, heart rate 130, and the saturation was 96%. The blood test um, was done by the internist and it shows RBCs are normal, hemoglobin normal. The white blood cells show 19,000 and neutrophils 90.4 thousand. The electrolytes show severe hyponatremia, severe hyperkalemia, the chlorine increased, and the calcium very low. And the kidney function shows urea 6 and one and creatinine 161, which shows um, starting alteration of the kidney function. The EGFR was as low as 37 and the albumin 27. The pancreatic amylase was 0 0.95 and lipase 65. There is a little alteration of the hepatic enzymes and the HbA1c was 13.6. There were signs of infection also rather than the white blood cells and neutrophils, the CRP was 156 and the procalcitonin was 1175. 
This is the first case I see such high procalcitonin. Usually, you know that procalcitonin between 0.05 to 0.5 is moderate risk, uh, mild risk, and 0.5 up to uh, 2 is moderate risk, and above 2 is severe infection. This case of procalcitonin was 11.75. There was also ketone in urine and protein in urine. So once seen by internet, she was in case of shock, hypovolemic, multifunction, ketoacidosis, a lot of disturbance of the electrolytes, of the kidney function, immunity system, and increased blood glucose. And he called the vascular surgeon because there is suspicion of lower limb ischemia due to the absent distal pulsation of both lower limbs and the coldness of the limbs. When I arrived, the vascular examination shows patent femoral and popliteal pulsation on both sides. But when you go distal, you find absent distal pulsation, bilateral, and cold extremities. But the same condition, she can move her toes, she can feel your finger. So it seems cold distal extremities, proximal pulsation are felt, distal pulsation not felt, but the patient has complete sensory and motor functions. The arterial Doppler was start, it was requested by the general surgeon before I arrived, and it shows weak flow, but no obstruction in the tibial arteries. And the MRI was done for the abdomen, and it shows stomach severely distended and filled with fluid. The regional bowel dilated, collapsed distal bowel suggested proximal gut obstruction. Luckily enough, during the MRI, he injected a dye, and we can see the vessel, but you see the primary report does not include any vascular command. It includes only the effect on the stomach and the gast GIT because till now the patient has gastric problem or GIT problem. But when I analyzed the MRI, I find a patent superior in the femoral mesenteric artery and no mesenteric venous occlusion. So this is the MRI. As you see, the stomach here is completely filled by fluid very much distended and the part of the jejunum. But if you see here, the distal bowel, bowel are empty, then even no fluid and they are completely collapsed. This is the water that we see here, but we'll see better in the second image. The stomach is filled, distended, there is fluid, and you see the distal bowels are empty. So when you start thinking like this, you think of an obstruction at the level of the duodenum or the distal trunk. When we analyze, analyze better the MRI, you see this is a stomach, and then we start seeing the aorta here behind. I will show it to you. This is the aorta start to filling, and up we stop here. This is the starting of the celiac trunk, a superior mesenteric. So you can follow with me what is going on. Up, celiac trunk here is patent, superior mesenteric ostium is patent, and you continue to see it's completely patent superior mesenteric artery. So it, I was astonished because the image of the presentation of the patient, yes, there is distended, yes, there is um, some GIT symptoms, but the superior mesenteric artery is completely patent. So how come she is such in pain and there is no signs at all of GIT mass, tumor, obstruction, vulvus? There is no clear signs of uh, GIT obstruction. So the question number one, you have, you will see a, a QR code now, please activate your internet connections and try to scan with the camera and you will see these three questions in order to see what would you do for this case at the first time, uh, management. Would you refer it to ICU trying to stabilize her and improve her general condition and then taking time to analyze better? Would you go directly for urgent laparotomy? or we'll go for urgent vascular exploration, see, uh, thinking that you may have missed something on the MRI. So this is the barcode. So please activate your internet connection and try to have the barcode by your camera. I'll give you one minute and then we'll go to the voting. You will see three questions. So would you do urgent laparotomy, 
try to discover what's going on, urgent vascular exploration, or would you shift her to ICU, improve her general condition, and then try to evaluate things with a uh, little time? Have you scanned all? I'll wait for 10 seconds and then I'll go to the voting. So this is a voting question, referral to ICU, urgent laparotomy, or urgent vascular exploration. So we'll see the result. 48% will refer to ICU, 36 will do urgent laparotomy, and 11.5% will do urgent vascular exploration. Very well, we'll continue to see what happened. So in fact, we decided to put her in ICU. She was so bad condition that you will not be able maybe to save her. She need blood, she need to be evaluated, kind of infection, try to control the antibiotic temperature was 39.9. She was in severe pain, she need a little bit analgesia. And at the same time, we have to improve the electrolytes. Her blood sugar was 13.6, which is huge, so procalcitonin was severely infected, uh, measuring the severe infection. So we have put her in ICU with nasogastric tube, urinary catheter, central venous line, all the things that you, we love to do in the ICU patients. And the objective was to control of her diabetic ketoacidosis, improve the kidney function, and the correction of electrolytes and antibiotic therapy. Of course, once again, the electrolytes show severe hypercalcemia, uh, hi, so I'm sorry, severe hyperkalemia and hyponatremia and hypocalcemia. So the patient deteriorated in the following few hours. So she was intubated and ventilated. And in front of this deterioration of the condition and the fever reached 40, tachycardia 170 per minute, tachypnea, severe abdominal pain and gardening, and she was intubated and the general surgeon was called and he decided to do the exploration by laparotomy. Uh, it's evident that the patient we were going to lose her, so he decided to go out and do whatever he can. So during laparotomy, he found an extended gangrene of the bowel. Of course, he got panicked and called the vascular surgeon. During the exploration, we found the situation as follow. Offensive odor, dirty intraperitoneal fluid, just a few fluids, not more than 25, 30 cc's, but thick, no signs of occlusion. We made an exploration of the whole GIT. There is no tumors in bowel or pancreas, no volvulus, no perforation even, no collapsed distal bowel. And the gangrene of the whole small intestine, including the right cecum. I discovered the aorta, of course, and I made the aorta, I touched the aorta of the patient. There is no atherosclerosis, the aorta was patent. There is no arrhythmia. The mesenteric artery expiration shows a patent artery palpable but weak pulsation and no signs of acerosclerosis. We took a sample from the culture, from the peritoneal fluid, and then we started to ask the second question. What is the intraoperative strategy? Do we resect the completely gangrenous bowel? Do we do vascular mesenteric arterial exploration to try to take out some distal emboli that may affect the distal irrigation of the bowel? Or we just close the abdomen with no option. This is the second QR code, so please you can scan it by your camera and answer these three questions. Would you leave her alone, reset the bowel, or make vascular exploration, trying to do um, an improvement or discover the cause into the mesenteric arch? I'll give you one minute for scanning and then we'll go for the vote.
Okay, one, one more 10 seconds. Okay, this is the second question. Resection of the bowel, vascular mesenteric artery exploration, or abdominal closure with no option. We have 30 participants. Then we see resection of the bowel will be on half of the uh, of you, 54% nearly will resect the bowel. And 32% will do mesenteric exploration. And only 12% will do abdominal closure and nothing, no option. So majority will do the resection of the bowel and 32 of vascular mesenteric and the remaining 12 will be closure for the bowel. So what did we do? We took a collegial decision of abdominal closure and no need for resection and no improvement on mortality. Why? Because when you have a global mesenteric gangrene like this, the mortality rate is 100%. That means even if you resect the whole bowel, the mortality rate is 100%. Besides, the patient has severe infection, severe renal impairment, severe um, immune system compromises, and we lost, lost the patient in, after 32 hours in the uh, ICU. I know you will be all disappointed. You will meet, will meet, for example, a big surgery for mesenteric artery. But the most important in this case will be the discussion. What had happened? What is the cause of our bowel ischemia? Is it a missed vascular cause? Is it severe infection? Is it diabetic ketoacidosis? Organ perforations that we missed to find? or another obstruction to miss the fire. These are the main causes of bowel ischemia. We had a young lady. She does not have any arrhythmia. She does not have atherosclerosis. She has no claudication, distinct claudication, saying that there is severe atherosclerosis, progressive, and she presented claudication pain after eating or something like this claudication. I mean, distinct claudication, of course. And she is only diabetic, and she came in emergency by alteration of her diabetes level to the maximum, severe infection undergoing, and there is no signs of distal embolization. So what was the cause of this severe bowel ischemia that make a gangrene of the bowel and we finally lost the patient? So this is the second vote. The third and last vote to try to take the camera because this is the main discussion of this case. This is a case of mesenteric uh, gangrene and you don't know the cause so let's think together what it might be so please scan this and then we'll see the, the question and think what do you think i know you expect a big case of endovascular or open or bypass but i find these cases you can find everywhere but this real case that happened last month make you sometimes incapable to do this is a case of a synthetic scheme it seems very obvious because you have a gangrene, but what happened? This was what we will try to answer in this vote. So another 10 seconds and we'll go for the rest of the voting. So this is the last voting. What is the cause of her bowel ischemia? Is it missed vascular cause that we did not find the an MRI? There were a patent celiac trunk, patent superior mesenteric. The distal part of mesenteric, superior mesenteric was not uh, possible to see. She has, she has no venous occlusion. She has no arrhythmia. No signs of uh, aortic aneurysm or embolic origin, no ulcer in the aorta. There is severe infection. There is diabetic ketoacidosis, organ perforation. We tried to make exploration and we could not find. I saw rupture appendix or rupture viscera, but it was not the case. Or there is a kind of obstruction in the ischemia. So what, what did you think? We had 30 participants, so we see the result now. There is half 
say there is nearly missed vascular cause and 36 percent severe infection and finally 16 percent poor diabetic cusaditis half say there is missed vascular cause so let's explore together once again the patient is young 38 years she has no atherosclerosis even when uh, exploration during laparotomy the aorta was completely normal pulsating there is no calcified aorta on the MRI, there is patent celiac trunk, patent superior mesenteric, there is patent femoral pulsation on both sides, and the uh, palpation of the mesenteric artery, it was palpable, but the flow was low. Um, what else do you expect to search for the, for the vascular stator? If there is something else, it will be very nice to discuss. So let's go to the final outcome. For us, we have studied the, uh, the analysis of the situation. The etiology of mesenteric ischemia that we all know is arterial spasms. 80% of cases are due to arterial spasm or arterial problem. The patient, our patient is young, as I said, there is no cardiac or pulmonary anomalies and no arrhythmia. Another cause may be arterial embolism. There is no cardiac origin, it's completely fit the patient, and there's no atrial fibrillation, no intracardiac thrombus, no aortic aneurysm, and no aortic ulcer. So maybe chronic arterial occlusion, once again, the patient is young, no atherosclerosis, no dissection, patent mesenteric artery on MRI and on the blood. But what we, this is the main um, story about the whole case, and that's why I wanted to present. We do not have to neglect other etiology. The case of shock, a severe infection, and chronic kidney failure. These are cases causing mesenteric ischemia due to spasm and electrolyte imbalance may cause also a kind of toxic uh, effect on the walls of the artery making severe spasm. This etiology we never speak about, that the non-occlusive causes, this, has, this case has no twisting of bowels, no volvulus, no trapping of the intestine with hernia or something, but she has a severe infection proved by the white blood cells proved by the procalcitonin, which reaches the maximum of the highest expected level. She has uncontrolled diabetes mellitus, and she has pus in the abdomen. Other causes are chronic inflammation as vasculitis, lupus, or sickle cell anemia that we cannot treat and we cannot define in such emergency. And some medication also may be responsible as some case of migraine medication, cocaine, or even birth control pills have been described in literature that they may cause uh, mesenteric vessel spasm leading to ischemia. But once again, the ischemia that she had, it was extensive ischemia. It took all the small bowel and even the right part, the lowest part of the right colon, it includes all the cecum. That means it took all the territory of the mesenteric artery, which was patent. So in conclusion, we have uh, defined the final diagnosis. We agree that it is a rare cause of non-occlusive, non-vascular mesenteric occlusion. Necrosis was due to severe intestinal infection with diabetic ketoacidosis. Negative finding for vascular origin we have just mentioned, young age, no vascular or cardiac origin, no torsion, and no intestinal occlusion. And the positive findings for infection was a severe infection, diabetic ketoacidosis, the renal impairment, with impairment of the immune system, the high neutrophils, which indicated bacterial infection, the procalcitonin more than 10, and finally, we, when we took a sample from the uh, abdominal fluid, we detected clepsial, uh, um, and, and of course, the state of the shock. I hope uh, this case will put you in mind that mesenteric ischemia is not only vascular, it's only 80%, and there is the remaining 20% of cases of non-vascular cause, we call it the non-occlusive mesenteric ischemia. Maybe I have disappointed you, you waited the big surgeries or big endovascular, but this is a real case that happened, and I was ready to do everything, and unfortunately, you find a case of mesenteric ischemia that you cannot treat, and uh, that's what happened for this case. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'm ready for any questions. Thank you, Dr. Khaled, a very interesting case. Uh